Hello and welcome to our reading from Tales of Old Ireland Retold by myself, Laura O'Brien. This is my lovely proof copy of, um, at least it has the newer cover on it than what I've been reading from. And if you are watching this and not through Patreon, then you have gotten it a month or two months or three months or six months after the patrons have gotten it over there. So if you want to get it earlier, get a, a story every single month read by me, then head over to Patreon. The link is, is below. And if you're one of my patrons, thank you very, very much. It is so appreciated to have your support. And I'm really glad to be able to give you a story every month, to read you a story every month. So we are on the Union at the River from the Mythological Cycle. She arrives early, as is her wont, to prepare the place and prepare herself for their meeting. Both so busy, so much to do, traveling the land, the sea, the sky, guiding and guarding the island, her people. She sighs, just a little. So much to do. But not this day. This day is their sow and meeting, always each year. And she will put the work aside and take pleasure in the preparation, in the waiting for his arrival. Nine plaited tresses hang heavy down her back, and she takes each, one by one, and releases the magic that she tied within. She will reform them later, as she does every year, to secure the spells once more. Long red hair now sits in nine smooth waves across her fair shoulders, as she steps from the ruddy cloak, its deep scarlet folds discarded on the bank of the River Onshin. Her first naked foot she places carefully by Echimek, the water to the sep. Straddling the clear flow that runs the middle boundary, the other barefoot she sets by Luskondorv, the water to the north. Such simple joy to bend into that pure stream, to feel its icy kiss on her flesh, to dip and scoop and splash the cleansing liquid to her sacred center, with thigh muscles flexing to keep her spread and open position balanced and sure. An awareness first, she senses him draw near, their constant connection pulsing stronger as distance closes. Then a noise, a small rustle in the undergrowth surrounding the glen. Slight, subtle, and she deliberately pays him no attention upon his approach, though a small smile touches her lips. Continuing her ablutions, hands slowly rise and fall from the water, the fire of sunset light sparking through each moving droplet, each glistening pearl of water that settles on skin. She can see him now from the corner of her eye, still and sheltered by the trees. She knows he likes to watch her. Drink in her face, her form, after so long apart. And so she sets a steady pace to the ritual, while he remains away, light dappling across his large body, standing with his massive club in hand and waiting savouring until his inevitable approach is signalled. When she is finished, and not a moment before, she raises her head and meets his eye with a glint to match his, her smile beckoning him closer. Now the time is upon them. An answering grin lighting his face, he steps from cover and is over to her in three long strides, showing no difficulty. He reaches across the river and lifts her into his arms, her head coming to rest in comfort on his broad shoulder, while his lips find her ear and begin to speak the words that are kept just for her. 
with a delicacy and gentleness that is still surprising to her from one so big. He lays her down on the bank and lies beside, still speaking softly such private sounds as are shared between couples. His questions she answers, his queries are reassured, their marriage vows renewed and refreshed as they unite once more in power and strength, in love and tenderness, in pleasure and joy. Afterwards, lying sated and secure together in the bed of the married couple, the Morian gives her mate, the Dagda, such advice as any sensible queen would impart to her king before a battle, to clear the land of support which would prove useful to the enemy, to gather the Aestana, the Tua, their tribe, to this place together for safety and counsel. She promises him her aid. Of course, she will fight for their tribe, their people, with magic and with blood. She decides to attack the enemy king directly, the Fomorian Indek Makdek Daunan. She will take from his body the blood of his heart and his very kidneys, denying him valour and battle ardour. Then she will return to the tribe, bearing two fists of blood, to prophesy the utter destruction of their foes. There is much more to be told of the battle that followed, fought across Machura. But they are all stories for another day. Yeah, I think I might leave that one off YouTube until Samhain, maybe. Leave it there for just for ye. And like I said, if you've seen it on YouTube, then get over to Patreon. It's only $3 a month and you can get your own story every single month. So, Slonga Full, and I will see you in the next video.